Hey everybody, this is Daniel Fox. Hey, uh, we're just a few short days away from the release of Mongosh, a chaos supplement for Zwei Hunter RPG. And I want to take the time today to actually talk about the book, talk about what it is, show you what's inside, talk about some of the design decisions, talk about the material, talk about all the fun stuff uh, that's really cool about this book. So. First off, uh, let me say that I'm going to be moving the camera around a lot because uh, there's a little bit of dim light in here, but I want to be able to show you everything that this that this book is about. So the first things first, let's actually take a look at the cover. So this cover was created by Ken Duquette, and he is one of our new cover artists. You probably recognize some of his artwork from our Arcane and Divine Magic cards. We had him uh, do the cover of this book uh, because we want to do something a little bit different than Zweihander. And what you can see is clearly something is going on in the background amid this battle. But uh, as we kind of zoom in, we can see these, you know, four powerful women fighting against this huge, massive horde of soldiers. And if you kind of zoom in and look at some of their facial features, it looks like they're a bit mutated, in fact. They can have rot on the back of their, on their backs and their armor. Um, but a lot of action kind of going on around here with some very bright colors. We can kind of see the woman right here. And it, actually this cover kind of continues on the back side. Um, but this is kind of the front the front side. Here's our, uh, our occult magician, uh, which you'll find in the book, our infernal saboteur uh, and uh, our opener of the way. Uh, and then uh, our Howling Marauder right there. So that's the, the front of the book. And uh, this book, by the way, is a soft touch mat. So um, you can actually probably see a little bit of white powder on it where I pull it out of the box. But it's really soft to, to the touch. Um, so it's easier to carry. Plus, high gloss books just, I don't know, they just feel cheap to me. So we made the decision to do, uh, to do soft touch. But here's the, here's the spine. Mongosh Grim and Perilous Supplement. Here's our Andrews McMeal Universal, the publisher's uh, button. And if we flip it over, it talks about what this book's about. It says, chaos is not a pit, it is a ladder. Mongosh is a supplement for the any award-winning best game and product of the year's Zwei Hunter Grim Perilous RPG, a gritty dark fantasy tabletop role-playing game. Using this book, you'll be able to add 68 new professions. Um, we add even more uh, than what's already in Zweihander. And of course, because we use a bounded accuracy model, um, everything adheres to that for skill distributions, for trait balance. Um, so everything doesn't feel splat booky because I hate splat books. We Nobody likes splat books because you end up like overpowering the core books. And we avoided that with this, this supplement. You can also do vehicle-based combat, which we're going to talk about and show you a little bit further inside. Use alchemy and witch science to gain new abilities, deadly abilities. Uh, build fantastic machines uh, ran by um, ran by uh, some electric cool stuff derived from witch stone. You can become an occultist to forbidding gods. That's right. There's demons in this. Surprise, surprise. There's a ton of new magic spells and rituals. There's new demonic gifts. And of course, for game masters, you can build your own creatures and NPCs using this. Uh, we made the decision to basically create a toolbox for game masters in this. But uh, nonetheless, um, it is of course powered by Zweihander, meaning it uses the Zweihander Grim and Perilous D100 game engine, which you'll see with some new books coming out soon as well. But uh, now we essentially have across both Mongosh and Zweihander 100, 186 unique professions and 300 spells. So a lot of a lot of a lot of different things you can do. Um, obviously, embrace the left-handed path of Mangosh where chaos awaits. Uh, Grown Parallel Studios, it's our, it's our freelance group. Interesting Meal Publishing, the publisher who I work for. Um, <clears throat> and it's $55 on uh, retail, but I believe it's less expensive on Amazon right now. So let's talk about the material. Uh, of course, you know, we use 108 GSM paper, nice and thick, 70 pound white paper. Uh, we have a nice little get a brownish black ribbon in here. And uh, like all of our books, they are lay flat. So whether you open them to the first page or the middle or the last, it's not gonna close on you. And if we zoom in here just a little bit, you can actually see 
it is has smythe bindings. So it's, you know, I think I think those are 16 packets for pages that are sewn and glued to this to the spine, to, to the plank. We use only the best of materials uh, whenever we produce books uh, here at Angels of Neil Publishing. So let's actually go back in and talk about uh, what's the point, what, what uh, Mongo shits. So as you open it, nice black kind of uh, inset, in sheets. These feel a lot like construction paper, but they're super tight and they hold the whole book together. Um, this book is incredibly solid. In fact, if you have a copy of Zweihander, you probably notice the same thing. Like we use the best of materials. So the books stay together, even under heavy dirt, if you ever use. They're very, very durable. Uh, when I was at uh, when I was at Gen Con, I was actually showing people, I was actually kind of trying to, you know, move either side of the covers on these to show how sturdy they are. Um, and the same uh, is with Mongoche. So Mongoche, grew in parallel supplement. And, and forgive me if, uh, you know, this this uh, this angle isn't perfect. Let me open up my laptop to get a little bit more color here, for a little bit white here. But you can see right on the inside this really cool border uh, that is very, very evocative. And of course, our borders and all interior artwork uh, is done by um, <clears throat> excuse me, is all done by Dan Mandich. So we're going to keep going through, obviously, Grand Corella Supplement. We already know what this is. It's written by me. Um, but, you know, it takes a village uh, to raise a child, or in this case, to create a, a book. So obviously myself, Tanner, Ken, Adam, Matt, uh, Fiona May Geist, who just won a couple of Ennies herself, Jennifer Ford, one of our editors, Dan Mandich, of course, Ken Duquette, you know, um, Sierra Stanton, and many, many others. The adventure in here, there's Think About Marie, uh, Semi Utsilo, and our cartography done by Peter Latimore, uh, who uh, works on the Garblag Games, uh, the Garblag Games streaming. Of course, we have our story by Danziger that every Is Wyhunder book begins with, written by Matthew Fulbright and myself. All of our play testers, all of our contributors, and so on and so on. Oh, look. What's up, buddy? Adam Koval. Uh, and so on and so on and so forth. So, you know, even though, you know, uh, an RPG may be created by one person, it literally takes a team of people to make it a reality. And I would be remiss if... I didn't call them out because they did such great work on this book. And without them, there's no way Zwei Hunter could have came to be. So thank you. And there's our Grand Prelice Studios logo. And of course, and thank you, Andrews of Neil Publishing, for uh, creating this, allowing us to create this amazing book. So we start off right up front by showing a familiar image you've probably seen already on Twitter. Uh, I posted a couple times. It's actually the characters from the old Dungeons and Dragons cartoon, but through the lens of Mongosh. So you have like your barbarian, your acrobat, uh, there's Uni, there's a little wizard dude, there's uh, Eric, uh, bereft of shield, there's the dungeon master. I can't remember her name, and I believe he's the Hank, I want to say. He's the one with the blonde hair. They've all been mutated and changed. Um, we thought it was kind of a funny, tongue in cheek thing to do. Um, but to, you know, we begin right out the gate with Libra Mortalium, Book of Mortals. Every chapter in here is actually in Latin, but we begin on the table of contents with its English pronunciation. Um, so beyond that, we go into Book of Weapons, Book of Vehicles, which I'm excited to dive into with you all, Book of Alchemy, Book of Demons, Book of Shadows and More Magic, Book of Evil, How to Make All Kinds of Big Baddies and Creatures as a Game Master. Um, and we continue on here with Book of Mysteries, how to craft a conspiracy. Uh, and then we end with an adventure. There's something about Marie. And this adventure is pretty dang cool. Um, I'm really proud of it. Uh, we, we, we always include an adventure in our books because we need to attend to the needs of both players and game masters. So every book we ever do, uh, every physical hardback book, we will always include an adventure. And we uh, end with the appendix with a t with a 100 taints of chaos, 100 chaos mutations, and a bunch of stuff that's useful for the game master in an index. So let's just dive right in. Uh, hey, look at that. That's uh, kind of a crazy image. Uh, once again, all the images are done by Dan Mandich, uh, all done by pencil. We do not do any sort of digital artwork in the book. And it starts with a story from... 
once again, our, uh, our, our misfortunate soul, Danziger Eckhart, and he tells his story about how he got his tattoos. And I don't want to spoil the story, but it's, it's pretty horrific. Um, and it takes a really dark twist. And, but don't let that deter you, uh, because although we, Zweihander is dark fantasy, it is not the dark fantasy you're accustomed to. And you're going to learn that as you see both in the style of writing and artwork that we chose for our art direction, that we lean toward inclusivity. So no spoilers. Uh, something really bad happens with Danziger, uh, obviously. Uh, and we'll be giving the designers now. This is just kind of a personal note for me telling you about you know what Mongosh is about where we started, why we did it, and what's inside. Um, you know, the, I think it's important to include designer notes. Uh, and that's me after writing Mongosh because uh, this one was not difficult to write. It, it just, you know, you, you come off writing one book and you jump right into the next and feel a bit frazzled. So boom, we start right out. We're like, hey, this is Libra Mortalium, uh, all new professions. So here's one of our big full page images by Dan Mandich, which I absolutely love this, absolutely. Here's our Infernal Saboteur. Uh, this is our Habit Conjurer. This is our, one of our pets. I can't recall what that profession is called, but it's like a, a priest, a minister of rot, that's right. Uh, and then you'll find her as well in here too. So all of our profession, all of our chapter entries start with these really cool kind of images right here. Um, and uh, that is inspired by uh, a very well-known cult leader, uh, but we'll, we'll talk about it later. So we talk about like, what's, what's in here? Professions. Oh my gosh, these people are really scared of this weird demon back here and these ignorant people in hoods. Um, then we have a new archetypes table. This is basically how you take the new professions from Mongosh and integrate it into your Zvoi Hunter game. Uh, a full new listing by archetypes. So academics, calendars, knaves, rangers, socialites, and warriors. All the new professions are indicated in bold. And obviously any profession that can utilize magic, arcane magic is indicated with a sepia star. Let me zoom in here a little bit. And those who use divine magic utilize a cross. Here's our misfortune of souls once again being chased after villagers. So we start out with the apostle. Although not all these professions in here are necessarily tailored toward quote chaos. Uh, we include a lot of those we couldn't include in, in Zweihander because Zweihander was just too damn big. Blitz Baller, appropriate, I think, because it is, a, I think today is the start of football season or something like that. Sports ball, score all the points. Um, yeah. And then, of course, uh, our Blitz Baller gets all kinds of really cool uh, traits. You choose one role, either you're a blitzer, a blocker, a catcher, a lineman, a runner, or a thrower. And based on what role you are, you get that specific trait. But, um, you know, blitz ballers uh, live for the glory. They must always have one hand free because they must have the other hand to hold up high and cheer themselves and others on. Then we have our cadet and military type uh, profession. Move on to our convict. That is actually, this right here is Danziger Eckhart, who actually began his story as a convict, both not only in the stories in the beginning of Zweihander on Mangosh, but also in, uh, in, in our game around the table. Danziger was a real character. Uh, we move on to our forger. Yeah, they're really good at forging things. We have our uh, other professions like our henchmen, uh, another kind of tongue in cheek uh, profession. Uh, we previously did, I believe we did our dungeoneer in in the in uh, Zweihander, a D and D profession thing. Um, and here, the you know, of course, the henchman always demands a fair share. And um, they treat a result of one percentile dice as a critical failure. Because if you played old school D and D, a natural one on a D twenty was always considered a critical failure. At least it's a house rule we had. So we just kind of like made with the, you know, we called out here. Um, obviously, we have our messenger. They move like they split. They move really, really, really fast, increasing their movement by plus three and reduce all movement actions by one action point in combat. And if you know about Zvoyhander, you'll know how important that is. Uh, we have our nomad, uh, who are really good at survival, and you're either a northerner, a midlander, or a southerner, and depending on that, you get one of these really cool professional traits. But they're, you know, they are always kind of drawn by wanderlust. Uh, they can't be restored on their peril condition track to unhindered. They're just nervous in urban conditions. They must, they desire to be in the wild. Our pamphlets here uh, are basically a uh, someone who spreads, you know, miscommunication and lies uh, by, through the written word. 
uh, but they're really good also at uh, at um, at uh, getting people's attention with folklore and rumor test. They can reroll it for better results. We make a few in jokes in here. I'll let you uh, look here for a moment to figure it out. Yeah, did you figure it out yet? No, that's okay. Um, hopefully you did. It's it's pretty damn funny. Um, and then we'll move on to our pioneer. And and by the way, we are barely we are barely scratching the surface. We're only twenty seven pages into a three hundred page three hundred sixty page book. Uh, we have our quack salver, uh, who are you know they're snake oil salespeople. We have our quartermaster, um, who are those who can are the backbone of the military, well educated and support the military. Uh, because they are really, really good at uh, ensuring nav successful navigation of warfare tests. They're kind of an everyman. Uh, we have our Riva, uh, which are kind of cool, really cool illustration, once again, by Dan Manditch. And, and once again, Dan Manditch does every single illustration of this book, every single damn one. Um, and there's, I think, uh, 360-something pages there is about, I want to say, 192 images total in here. So, a lot. Uh, we have our wrestler, really good at wrestling and stealing animals. We have our skull, a war skull. They're really good at inspiring people, which is super cool. We have our stevedore, our dock workers. And we have our undertaker, basically people who bury the dead. So that's our new regular professions we added to Zweihander. And I believe with 72 in Zweihander and 40, 46, I think it is, or 42 in this, that's a lot of starting professions you can you can use, but we're not done because we now have expert professions you can graduate into. So these expand our current expert professions from Zwei Hunter, which there are 46, and in this there are now 48. So I guess in short, we just have a ton of professions. Um, here's our Abbot. Hey Abbot. Uh, they're really good at absolving sin. They can remove uh, curses and magical effects by spending a fortune point. They can also reduce chaos ranks, which is super cool. If you know anything about the way corruption and chaos ranks work in Zweihander, you'll know how important that is. But, of course, we have our alienist, because in Zweihander, now with Mongosh, hypnosis actually can help restore peril and do all kinds of crazy stuff. But um, they have Dr. Mindbender as their professional trait. Every profession in Zweihander does one unique special thing, even though they may share a similar bed of skill ranks and talents and bonus advances. Uh, they always get just one unique thing that they can do that defines their profession. And in this case, Dr. Mindbender, uh, their profession, can uh, they can use hypnosis to entrance people to do kind of crazy stuff. Uh, so you'll have to read a little bit more about that or pick up the book if you want to check it out. Naturally, you have our armager, our heavily armored guy who or girl or whoever who carries a ton of heavy weaponry. Um, and they actually add their damage threshold temporarily every time they suffer damage. Um, they're pretty, pretty dang tough. We have our artillerist, uh, who is kind of your expert uh, war machine person. Our barnstormers, who actually fly fantastic machines like Zeppelins and Hal Davinsons and Rumble Butlers, which we'll talk about later on. They get the ability Red Baron. Not to imply that you must be male to take this profession. Uh, your character doesn't need to be male to take this profession, but um, it's just kind of clever and funny, I guess, uh, because you know Snoopy or whatever. Um, Firestormer. So our blade dancer, Leaf on the Wind, is their professional trait. We have our butcher priest, which is cool. Grog guts and glory. When they're intoxicated, they add to their damage they inflict, and they can consume. Uh, spoiled meat and filthy water without getting disease. They're actually uh, a worshiper of one of the new demons uh, called the Endless Gullet. Uh, and they, leave in, they lean into some interesting aspects like depravity. We have our Burgomaster, right? Your local, your local, uh, your local mayor, whatever it may be. Their ability is called de facto. They're really good at re-rolling. They're really good at bargain education tests. And, um, you know, they have, you know who I am, they have a drawback uh, because they are burger masters. Uh, they are dignified, and, but they are given to vehemence. Uh, two sides of the same coin. Our caravan mystic, uh, yet another example of how we show disabled characters uh, in the game. Because unlike 
other RPGs. Uh, we don't view disability as a point of weakness, but a source of strength. Um, that's rewarded through um, fate points, even though the Caravan Mystic isn't necessarily assumed that you are in it confined to a, a, a rickety looking wheelchair in this case. Um, we just chose that image because we want to be as inclusive as possible. Because once again, um, we are not showing characters in world, so to speak. We are showing we are showing people around the table wearing the clothing and trappings of those in the game. Um, and that's where we really begin to, 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 to distinguish ourselves from other dark fantasy RPGs. Um, we, we, it's important to us for art direction is to show different um, gender and sex and, um, and situations. Uh, for those who are playing RPGs. It's important to me, it's important for our industry, it's not a marketing decision, it's just the right decision to make, so that's why we do it. Uh, we have our Conda Terry, they're kind of like an up, upgraded mercenary type who are soldiers of fortune. Uh, we have our courtesan, which is our upgraded prostitute. And if you look in this image, uh, you might notice something uh, unusual I don't know what it is but uh, I'm just gonna kind of slowly circle where it may be um, let's move on I get deadly beauty which is cool it's kind of like a charm effect but beauty is only skin deep so they can't assist others with skill tests here's our cult leader uh, dancing with snakes and he has a big old chaos symbol on his forehead and the dude's ripped uh, or skinny at least. Uh, nonetheless, uh, they get cult indoctrination. When they hypnotize people, they can remove a memory, they can implant a new one, or they can have a person recall an event that transpired with perfect clarity because they use brainwashing, which is uh, kind of fun and cool. Um, so we'll move on next to our dirge singer. These are really, really cool. Based, they worship the Black Lodge, a mystical demon that is not a thing, but a place. And based on the season, their traits change, which is super cool. In spring, they generate crit successes, and they, they generate crit successes, they add fortune points to the fortune pool. If uh, it's summer, they can substitute incantation in place of any skill required to resist spells. In autumn, they don't suffer mental peril, which is cool. In winter, uh, they don't expend reagents, which is neat. And of course, they are followers of covenant magic. Unsurprising, because all people who worship demons uh, uh, gain access to covenant magic. But anyone who does worship a demon gains what's called ruinous power. And even though this is kind of the bog standard for every single one, at the very, very end, there's something that's always unique about this specific profession. So. Finally, whenever you critically fail to cast magic in the season, other than your birth, as outlined in the background, you gain six corruption. So um, they get something kind of interesting there. Ecstatic celebrants, uh, they worship the Prince of Pleasure. Uh, this is a really cool image uh, that we really, really like. It seems to show them you know, mid-revelry. And of course, uh, you can then get the ability Insidious Whisper. We move on to our Exorcist. They exercise the demons, and they get the ability of uh, Spiritus Sanctus. Of course, my Latin, my French, uh, and my German are really poor, so I'm going to mispronounce everything because mispronunciation is on brand. As an example, uh, we don't say Zweihander, we say Zweihander, because we're here in Missouri. Or you say Mangosh instead of Mangosh, which is, I believe is the French pronunciation. but. Nonetheless, uh, if you mispronounce it, it's totally on brand. Uh, don't feel bad. Please do it because uh, as a creator, I'm, I'm, you have know, my, my blessing. Uh, speaking of blessings, look at the fanatic. He's crazy. They've got their head, or she's crazy. She's got her head in a cage with this crazy cross she's carrying and a truncheon in hand. Fanatics are interesting. And depending on the type of fanatic you are, because you have religious fervor, you're either a flagellant, a heretic, or a zealot and you get an ability based on what type of fanatic you choose to be. But uh, their drawback is gospel desolation. They immediately get a disorder and they don't wear armor um, because that's the tenets of being a fanatic. And of course, here is their skills and bonus defenses and talents. A fell knight, uh, their ability, they actually bond with armor permanently. 
uh, and they can ignore its encumbrance and such. So you can tell that this person has been clearly mutated over time. And this is where you start to see some of that, some of that chaos stuff we talk about in Mongosh here. Of course, you can also be a friar. One thing we felt was kind of missing in Zweihander uh, was non-magical clerics. So friars, abbots, apostles, like they were just kind of missing. And I think a lot of RPGs miss out on that and we need to address it. So we have non-magical professions that are clerical um, because they're necessary. Because not every not every cleric in Zweihander or Mongosh casts magic. I mean, that shouldn't be the assumption of a low fantasy game. I mean, that kind of feels weird, I guess, to me because I don't play high fantasy games. Dark fantasy is kind of rooted more in, quote, reality, end quote. So we have professions that are just, um, you know, just, just bog standard, you know, like clerics, monks, ministers, things like that that don't use magic. Grandmaster, look at that dude. He's got a giant book at his waist and a purity seal. Uh, Grandmaster is kind of a much, much, it's, it's a, a person who is a, 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 a master knight. And they get vainglorious or van, valorous or rather. Uh, when they use inspiring words, foes suffer for letting of hatred. Uh, any allies that are near them uh, can reference your percentile based chances to succeed a skill test to withstand the effects of stress and fear. Super, super cool. But their drawback is injustice for all. They uh, change our order alignment to pride and chaos to arrogance. Once again, uh, your alignments are two sides of the same coin. They are kind of two polar similarities between order and chaos that helps drive your character's personality only in tense situations because you're not a puppet pulled by two strings in Zoyhunter. You basically have two alignments um, that uh, are, are, are kind of like keywords you can use to think about when you role roleplay. Uh, but you're not a puppet pulled by two strings. You kind of operate somewhere between there, the gray area. But in extreme situations, you may lean one way or the other particularly in the cases of stress, fear, and terror. So Grave Vivamancers, uh, they get the weirding way. You're gonna see some Dune references in the Green Vivamancer, the Grave Vivamancers. Um, they are tied to the Skurzak, which are these crazy, creepy looking mouse slash rat people that live beneath the streets. Um, I won't talk too much about that because Skurzak don't exist and neither do the gray Vivamancers. You'll have to read more to learn about them. And then here is one of my favorite professions, the Grognar. This is actually written by Ken Duquette. We wanted to kind of poke fun at old school D&D people uh, because I, being a 42 year old, started out playing no D&D. And you know, if you can't make fun of yourself, uh, you, you know, get a sense of humor. So we we, <laughs> we want to make fun of ourselves because we are grognars to some degree, uh, although not belligerent and angry, but uh, they can flip the results as the seat of warfare tests. Uh, and they can do some cool stuff with misfortune points. But naturally, grognards, as they are, uh, they tend not to really want to learn new games. So we kind of made it where when you, you know, spend additional 50 reward points to buy skill ranks because Grognards are set in their way. It's just this kind of the thing. And there's some really funny end jokes in here. I completely invite you to, to check out. But this image is uh, Gary Gygax. Um, it's an homage to him and was done after uh, Uncle Gygax passed away. Um, you know, they, they, everybody's favorite uncle, the, the, the godfather of RPGs. So, you know, RIP. Have a conjurer. We actually saw her a little earlier at the beginning of this chapter. She is a, an extremely, extremely uh, powerful type of caster, uh, which they get all kinds of neat stuff uh, for their professional traits. But there's a really cool image again uh, by Dan Mandich. There's our Habit Conjure in a really cool painting. Aha, the Hexer. Uh huh. So um, the Hexer began, uh, you know, many, many, many years ago before. The Witcher came out, and there's a series of books called The Hexer by the original author uh, of, of The Witcher. And I was always really inspired by his books. I thought they were really interesting, kind of ahead of their time. And right around the time The Witcher 1 came out, they had written, they had actually done an English translation of Hexer, and they called it The Witcher because that was the English translation. Well, um, we wanted to accommodate that here as a profession, and we make a callback to that. It's totally... Uh, you know, it's totally meant to be able to allow you to play a Witcher in Zweihander called the Hexer. You go through the trials, you get all the things that make sense for a Witcher. You actually get to trace sigils, which we'll talk about later on, which are kind of like signs. 
Um, obviously, uh, if you're if it's if this follows the Hexer lore, they are eunuchs, um, and they're humans and mutants for being affected by magic toxins and everything else. Here's our Howling Marauder, which is inspired by a character played by Daryl Hannah, I believe it was, in Blade Runner. We really liked uh, this really cool wig and her eye makeup from the movie, so we carry that through in the illustration. Um, and uh, this is a really, really cool profession. In fact, uh, Howling Marauders dedicate themselves to one Abyssal Prince. So among, the, among demons, there are also Abyssal Princes, and there are five of them that of the Prince of Change, the Prince of Decay, the Prince of Pleasure, and the Prince of Violence. And then there's the Outsider, an Abyssal Prince that is actually vying against other Abyssal Princes. Um, and you can read all about that later on. So you'll buy the book and check it out. Infernal Saboteur. Uh, they are, they basically uh, influence, they're the, kind of the Grimma Worm Tongue, like the power behind the throne, the King's Whisper, who is turning whatever lord or ruler toward uh, devilish things. And they get a really cool professional trait called um, Purple Hand of Change. They don't have to spend reward points to learn spells. And they triple their intelligence bonus to determine how many spells they can learn, which is really, really cool. So I'm going to take a pause for a moment and actually talk, look back at this really cool border. You can see on the left-hand side, we always do something that kind of leans in toward the chaos. And this is, of course, done by Dan Mandich, as I mentioned before. And then somewhere about midway, it begins to transition toward this really cool kind of natural, almost druidic sort of nature-based right-hand rocker uh, in the border. And it kind of continues on what the chapter name is. So yeah, that, that's totally intentional. The left-handed path for chaos, the right-handed path for order. Um, yeah, that's what it is. So here's our jackdaw. This is a master thief and they get the black art. They can do all kinds of really cool stuff like use skullduggery to parry weapons, which is super neat. Um, and then we have the Kinslayer. These are people who are charged to uh, track down the Weregeld. Uh, they are bounty hunters extreme. And um, they always contract blood oaths to go after their foes. And uh, they have some really interesting kind of drawbacks here too. And here's this really neat picture. This is actually a gnome, uh, this boy hunter gnome, um, which are dirty and filthy and very much unlike other, other gnomes you've probably seen in other books. So here is our maestro. And this too is a reference to um, John Blanche, I believe, from wherever fantasy role play and fame uh, history. And you can see his initials up on the, uh, the easel. JB. And of course he drew the Mona Lisa, but corrupted. Um, John Blanche, uh, you know, we, 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 we call out a lot of our favorite kind of artists, writers, designers in this book. There's a lot of pop culture references. Um, and, and, and that's another place where we kind of are different than other dark fantasy games because being a, a child of pop culture, uh, I just, I felt that to make our books different and need to be funny. Like fu like gallows humor in some cases, not like grim, dark, evil, like, argh, like hyper-masculine, you know, dark fantasy. But I felt that was just necessary to include just some call-outs that people would recognize and, and bring some levity in the conversation because everything can't be dark and grim and boring. And, 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 and that's one of the biggest challenges we have, I think, about when we talk about this game. It's like, it's not just like, typical Warhammer fantasy role play or other dark fantasy things that are just, you know, dour and depressing. Um, I just include a lot of pop culture references because I think it's funny. Like, you know, our Minister of Rot, it comes off as, you know, if you look at the top of the image, it's like, I'm a pleasant, nice priest. But when you come toward the bottom of the phrase of their monk's robes, they're rotted and crawling with rats and locusts and flies. Because their ability, like I mentioned before, because I love pop culture and I'm a, you know, I'm not, and, and, and other stories, they get the ability to Cheshire Grin. They can actually use their charm skill in place of guile and use it to parry melee weapons because that smile will throw people off. But then you discover who they really are. Worshippers of a demon called the Prince of Decay. And there's their fetid altar. 
So here's our Moot Warden, which is kind of like a really cool Road Warden slash kind of cop. Um, here's our Natural Philosopher, and they actually make these really cool uh, flying and fantastic machines. That's their ability. And you'll learn about that once we get a little bit further into the book. Uh, their ability is called uh, Weird Science. Metal tubes and pots and pans, bits and pieces of magic from the handbook making weird science. That's my terrible singing. Um, if you're watching Queen of Embers, our stream for Zwei Hunter, you will discover that we sing a lot of really bad songs uh, because that's just kind of how Mike, the boss bosser, and I roll. Um, so, yeah, I'm probably going to sing a couple times, I'm sure, in this silly stream. Oh, so their ability is called Icarus Complex because anyone who's dealing with, you know, flying machines. Uh, have a bit of Icarus complex, uh, and they suffer drawback for. We actually talk about Daedalus's folly uh, in here, and once again, that's that kind of uh, call out to you know my 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 pop culture and my '80s, I guess, background. I don't know. Um, we spoke earlier about making reference to other characters. Here is the unrealized King Conan. There's Conan's sword. There's Arnold Schwarzenegger's King Conan at the end of the old movie. And that's the Oath Keeper. Um, they maintain the Book of Oaths and the Book of Grudges, which is cool. Uh, you have to read about them in the book to learn a little more about them. Ah, here's our occult magician. She, so if you recognize her face, she actually adorns the front of the book. One of my favorite professions in the entire game is the occult magician. They're so, so cool. They actually get an ability called psionic disruption, which basically allows you as a player to tell the game master what action to take with, with foes that they fight against. So you get to actually take narrative control of the story and say, no game master, that, that enemy or that foe will use a different thing that you intended to use. So you basically dictate what they do. So it's kind of cool. But they do gain, they are damned, they gain a malignancy for doing this. Malignancies are like disorders, they're just a little bit different. Like you can have an atrophied hand or be unable to use one of your feet or legs or something like that. There's different things you can do. Opener of the way, another one of my favorite professions. You know, they just, look at that, pupilless eyes, holding forth shards of reality. And of course they have a mirror for a knife. I mean, that's just so, so cool. They get renegade magic. Remember, they, the opener of the way worships the outsider, the abyssal prince who fights against the other abyssal princes. And because of that, you get renegade magic. That means anytime you use magic, you don't need to know the true names of abyssal or supernatural creatures to affect them, which is incredibly, incredibly powerful in this book. We have our outlaw chief. And this uh, character is inspired by a show that Tom Hardy is in. The name of it escapes me, but it's definitely a, a, a Dan Bandage made this choice to make a reference to it. They get the ability of Warmonger. They get punishing and reach qualities to all one-handed melee weapons. But Outlaw Chiefs are kind of like the king of bandit kings. Of course, we have our Physiker. This is your, quote, doctor of the Grim and Perilous world. Um, and um, they have bedside manner <laughs> for their professional trait, uh, which is really cool. They're really good at healing people, uh, but they're overworked uh, as most doctors are. They're constantly tired. Um, they move down an additional step on the peril condition track whenever they suffer from stress, fear, or terror. And uh, you know, this is a Hispanic character uh, and he's missing a hand. Um, something must have went really, really, really wrong uh, with, his, with, his, uh, with his workings. Poor Fisker. And then, of course, we have our Rhyme Maiden. Not Rhyme as like Mad Rhymes, but Rhyme Maiden is in uh, Rhyme from Ice. Really, really cold. And uh, you will notice that she looks a little bit like Elsa. So I think uh, we would cover off on uh, her professional traits up here. There's some Disney uh, references, I'm sure, uh, in the profession description. Uh, and, uh, of course I'd make a let it go joke, but, um, I just don't think it's coming to me right now, but she's clearly bored and she's like, ah, oh, these people are frozen and ice, uh, whatever, let it go. Uh, Rune Jarl, uh, people who can utilize the new Futhark runes, better, better runes, bigger, better runes, bigger, better runes that are rune thane from the previous Zweihander. Here's Skeletor, uh, just kidding. It's like a super beefcake. 
a dark fantasy dude wearing a Magneto helmet in literally the armor that Skeletor wears. Uh, he's a Sanguid Legionnaire. They're actually, they worship the Prince of Violence. And even though they, he, he kind of looks like he's kind of like a uh, you know, traditional dark fantasy dude, uh, which is intentional. <laughs> um, check out that loincloth, bro. What is that suggesting? Um, they worm their way into military units and turn soldiers toward the worship of the Prince of Violence over time. So being a worshiper of a demon, you must operate in secret. So you may wear the trappings or clothing of a soldier or a local mayor or a burgomaster um, to turn people toward the worship because you're not just like standing around a table, raising a cup and toasting to evil. No, instead you're manifesting the demon's will through insidious ways. Sharpshooter, you can imagine what that is. Super cool. They get precision shots and psychotic break. They're not killers. They're mostly just sharpshooters. So... Here's our shipmaster. They get the ability. Hi, hi, skipper. Yeah, and sea legs is their drawback. Here's a really cool kind of half page image Dan Manditch did once again of a ship side battle. Here's a shopkeeper. A shopkeeper is no mere NPC. Uh huh. And the drawback is the customer is always right. We move on to our Sirogo Prophet, uh, who are worshippers of a demon lord called the Hell Furnace. And here's this, here's this Sirocco prophet, like covered in tattoos and something magma and crazy stuff. And ash and fire. We have our Skinwalker. These are characters, I guess, could be described as best kind of like our Grim and Perilous Furries. They actually, they derive their power by worshiping uh, these strange primeval creatures. And what they do is based on that creature type that you emulate, worship, wish to invoke, or wish you may perhaps were, whether it be an adder cap spider, a barrow bellied orc, a death bat, a dire rat, a howl bear, a silver whack warg, or water panther, you gain one of these really cool professional traits uh, depending on which you, um, which you emulate. Or want to be so yeah it's kind of a grown perilous uh a grown perilous furry uh, for lack of a better term um sworn sword these people are basically judicial champions they fight trials by combat they're really good at fighting people one-on-one -on -one, but they're terrible at fighting people three or more because they're company accustomed to fighting one-on-one -on -one. here's our vampire hunter yep 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 and there's a little story down here, maybe, about a tale of a female hunter named Lady Summers who surrounded herself with roughshod apprentices, an antiquarian named Rupert, a man who could transmutate into a wolf and willow the hedgewise. She reputedly even aligned with a vampire to hunt down, hunt down other vampires. So, you know, uh, some Buffy the Vampire Slayer lore there. Because, once again, uh, I, I love... I love pop culture, and it bleeds into every single thing I write. I can't help it. It's probably annoying to some people, but um, sorry, I guess. Um, war General. I think this is our, one of our last professions. Uh, they get the art of war. Harrison once said, in the midst of chaos, there's also opportunity. We'll implore your comrades to find an opening when mayhem rises. And here is our War General. And then the final profession on here, the witch doctor, who gets, who's this guy here? Ooh, look at him, he's crazy. He gets the ability, ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah. Ting, ting, la, 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 bing, bing. Um, I think that's probably from Bewitched, the old TV show. I just remember there's like this scene, I think when they're like, seeing, I don't know. I can't recall what it's from, but it's the first thing I thought of when I thought about the witch doctor. It was that old song, uh, ooh, ee, ooh, ah. Um, in fact, I think Adam Coble sings it in one of his reviews on uh, of 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 Mongosh. So uh, we kind of end this chapter. We're only at page ninety-two of three hundred. We end this chapter uh, with with uh, an addendum, basically requirements to move into professions across both books. So that's that's it for the first third of the book. So we will come back with another video a little bit later to talk about Liber Armorum. 
uh, which uh, dives into new armors, new equipment, new things, new stuff you can use, new weapons, new new everything um, that you can add to your Zwyander game that is well and perfectly balanced. Um, so I will return with another video soon to talk about that. Thank you all for watching, and um, I hope that this gave you some insight into some of the really cool stuff we have in the first quarter of Mangosh, first quarter of the book. Um, if you're looking to buy it, you can get it on Amazon right now for $38. I think the cover price is $55. It ships on the 10th, which is Monday, I think, uh, just a few days away. Uh, but you can buy it right now on Amazon, super cheap, uh, although it's not necessary to have Versus Y100. It is a nice accompaniment. It's not a splat book. It just adds more options, more well-balanced options. So uh, stay tuned. I will come back with another video here soon uh, uh, and talk to you, talk to you all soon again.